quadratic reciprocity سوا سوا جينا ارى دي البرزنتيشن كنت انا بروف انا ما بروف تاعها سوا لكن لان اي جيس لو نس كل حتى فين بالمالت لا اي مين شو لوز اسك اي جيس ام اه ال ال لان تي كنا نعمل بروف تاعها بيرو نحسب لكتر حاجه دي فيتش لي او لكتر مش دي فيتش لي لكتر راجوني على في فور سي اندر جرادوتس او يا نس انك قبل ما يلتا او شو حد تي رمي يا It's difficult to motivate, sort of, unless you come across the specific stuff it's talking about. So, uh, it even looks weird. So, what about those? You know, fractions. You know, like p, q, q, p. This should just be one if it, if they're literally fractions. And this is, you know, so it's that means something different. So, I don't know if you're actually fit in here for each thing to tell them. So, a lot of the majority of the talk has been motivating it rather than. And proving it, so we're going to motivate it, and then we're going to discuss what the result says and see some applications of it. So, on. so um, also a bit of historical interest. So, also in the um, flap extract or in the Facebook event description, I guess I said that this theorem is the most popular in terms of proofs. Okay, it was proven two hundred times. So, on. Uh, it's famous because Euler couldn't manage to prove it. So, on. it's one of those theorems that you know, it even evaded Euler's um, attempt at proof. Gauss was the first to prove it. So well, Gauss, he tried and he did an incorrect proof first, and then he, he did a correct proof. Um, he called it the um, Aureum Theorema, so well, it's the golden theorem. So, and some people just say it's the most beautiful theorem in mathematics anyway. So it's, it's very, it feels like it comes out of nowhere. Like it feels like it shouldn't be, you know, it's too good to be true sort of. But let's explain what it means anyway. So. First of all, we need to talk a bit about modular arithmetic, which is basically um, related quite a bit with what Adriana spoke about in her talk last week on cryptography. Okay, so basically, I'm going to um, explain like the what's the word? It, well, I think we should familiarize ourselves with working with modular arithmetic to properly motivate this um, result. Okay, so what is modular arithmetic? It's a number system like the whole numbers. Okay, so you get the integers z, and you assume all the rules that they obey. Okay, so take them for granted, but add an extra thing: decide to equate a, spe a specific integer with zero. Okay, so for instance, we can take twelve if we decide twelve is zero. So you might say this is nonsense, or it might break everything. Surprisingly, it doesn't. Okay, so it has logical consequences, of course. It's just saying twelve equals zero. Okay, but it doesn't break. Like arithmetic still works, it just works in a different way. Okay, so if you keep all the rules from before, and you just add this into the mix, um, it still works. Like you can, you don't get logical contradictions basically. So what are some consequences of this, for instance? Okay, like thirteen. Um, so, so thirteen becomes twelve plus one, right? So thirteen is twelve plus one. Sorry, this is like a normal thing from Z, but twelve is zero now. So thirteen is equal to one. Right, basically. Uh, similarly, 14 is 2, 15 is 3, and so on. Right, so you get these uh, consequences. Also, 24 is 12. Right, because you can, 24 is 12 plus 0, 12 plus 12, which is 12 plus 0. Or it's 0 plus 0, so it's, it's 0. Similarly, 25 is 13, and 13 is the same as 1. Right, 150, you can subtract 12, and it's 138, but you can keep subtracting 12, and you get 6. Or you can add 12 and you get 162. Okay, so it doesn't really matter 12 law or 12 lamb, sort of, it doesn't matter. They're all equal, basically. Let's see the idea, right? And also negative numbers, right? So minus one, you can write it as zero minus one, which is 12 minus one. Okay, and so on. Minus two is 10, minus three is nine, etc. Okay, minus one to five is minus five, etc. etc. So this is how arithmetic works on the clock. And last time Adriana did like a nice graphic with like a string going on the clock and so on, right? So yes, so obviously on the clock, 13 and 12, 13 and one are the same, right? 25 and one are the same, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So instead of writing this just equals though, okay, we say five, so five and 17, for instance, we say five is equivalent to 17 mod 12 or congruent to 17 mod 12. Okay, so this is just saying that they are equal up to adding or removing a number of 12s, basically. And that's what this means. Okay, so A is equivalent to B mod X means A and B are equal. Just add some integer number of uh, X's. Okay, so like plus 23X or minus 5X. Okay, so that's basically what, what uh, this means. So 
let's see some real world applications. Okay, so obviously the clock, I guess, yes, 13, one, okay, but that's really an application. Like, how is it useful, I guess? Um, so today is Thursday, okay? What day will it be in 537 days? For instance, okay? So if you think about it, if today is Thursday, in seven days, it is also Thursday. In 14 days, it is also Thursday. In 21 days, it's also Thursday, et cetera, et cetera. So every sort of seven can just be removed here, okay? So all we want to think about is what is five through seven? Mod seven, okay? So if you notice that five through seven can be written like this, 76 times seven plus five, mod seven, this bit is just zero, okay? This is like adding weeks, like adding a week and a week and another week, so, right? 76 weeks, but that will just keep it Thursday, basically. And then adding five at the end, you get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So the answer would be Tuesday. Okay, in five to seven days from now. So, um, obviously, other applications are RSA, different Hellman, and so on, which is what Adriana mentioned, right? And also, um, uh, mod zero arithmetic shows up in computing blockchain hashes, for instance. So, if you're interested in cryptocurrency and so on, obviously, it's applied there. Okay. Now, so you know, this is just to motivate a bit if you care about applications, I guess. So, um, multiplication also makes sense. Okay, by which I mean. So we've I've only focused on sort of addition and subtraction so far, but even if you multiply, you can still get a meaningful sort of system, okay? If you ad ad adapt to that. Here I'm doing seven now, seven is zero here. So three times six, which is 18, 18 is four more than 14, and 14 is the same as zero, mod seven. So three times six is four, for example, right? And then generally you can add and subtract by anything on both sides of something like this, okay? Uh, and then it works out, okay? So if A and B are the same, A plus Y and B plus Y are the same, mod X. Similarly, you can multiply by an integer on both sides, okay? So you can carry out normal algebra on these equations. So for, again, some examples, since four is 19, we can subtract one and get three is 18. So this will be true, okay? Because this is true, this is true. Similarly, three is 11. So if we multiply by three, we get nine is 33, right? Mod eight. Um, so, oh, so we can solve equations, right? So if I ask you x plus 3 is 1, mod 4, what is x? You can take the 3 to the other side, and it's 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but mod 4, negative 2, and 2 are the same, so I just wrote 2, okay? So now the question comes, what about division? So this is like a, an equation now, so we're thinking about like equations in this world of modular arithmetic. What if you have like 3x plus 3 instead of x plus three, which is like similar to this, just uh, the three. So again, you can take the three to the other side, right? Which is minus two, which is two. But now we want to sort of divide by three. Okay, so can we divide by three? That's the question. Um, is, is it like two thirds? Okay. And, uh, you know, so, so, well, it depends. So with, we're working within the number system, which is the integers. Okay, so if we restrict our, or a modified version of the integers. If we restrict our view to the integers alone, this has no solutions in the integers. So ignore the mod, right? If we ignore the mod, 3x equals 2 has no solutions. Um, the rationals are an, another beast, or, okay? So that's like you add fractions, sort of, you add it so that equations like this have solutions, basically. But in this system, so it might seem like a layer, which of, yeah, you know, if the integers don't have solutions, this is like a, something which comes from the integers, this system, this number system. But if you think about it, actually, okay, if you put two there, three times two is six, but six mod four is two. So this does have a solution, okay? So even though it didn't in the integers, it does have a solution in this world because two is the same as six, basically. So three X equals six does have a solution in the integers and three X equals six and three X equals two is the same. So we need to... So the question is, how can we reconcile this with how we usually think about division? Okay, that's the question. Like how, how you know, is like two thirds and two, can we interpret two thirds somehow meaningfully and is two thirds equal to two in the system, you know? Um, yes, yeah, so in general, if you think about within the set of whole numbers, within Z, you can't always divide, okay? You can divide sometimes. So like I said, you can divide say 10 by five, but you can't divide 10 by three, okay? So when you can't divide always, okay? So in maths, it's like, well, you know, always, if you can't do it always, you say you can't basically. So you can't divide in Z, okay? So Z is what's called a ring, okay? It's a, it's a structure which, called, which is called a ring. You can add things, subtract and multiply, but you can't divide. 
can't always divide. Basically means you can't, if you can't always, you can't divide. If you can always divide, um, you get a field, it's called a field, okay? Um, technically, you can't divide by zero, okay? That's always true. So Z is a, a ring, fields are like the rationals, the real numbers, okay? Even the complex numbers. Um, so the question is, this interesting example from before, um, it seems like we can sort of divide, right? Now, the question is, can we divide? Is it like in this new number system, is it a field or is it a, a ring? Like, can you always, if you have three X equals, you know, if something X equals something, can you always take that to the other side and solve for X, okay? So that is the question. So yes, first of all, to truly understand this problem, the best way to understand division as a concept is uh, not as a distinct operation of its own, okay? Think of it like addition. Addition is not, addition and subtraction are not distinct operations. Subtraction is just addition of a negative element of like something which undoes this plus, okay? Minus three is adding the opposite of, of three, okay? The opposite of three is something which you combine into three and you get zero, okay? So you probably are familiar with this sort of idea when it, came, when it comes to matrices at a level, for instance, okay? So at, in matrices, you don't divide by a matrix, you multiply by an inverse element to get rid of the matrix, okay? So matrices are a ring, okay? Why? Because you can sometimes divide, but you can't always divide, okay? So there would be a field if you could always divide. In fact, if you restrict, if you get like all the matrices, all the two by two matrices, for instance, and you throw out the non-invertible ones, you get a field, right? Um, okay, so. Division is that okay? So, okay. So, let's explore this question now. So, first of all, in this modular arithmetic world, something which is cool. So, I've been sort of saying, uh, so mod four, for instance, two is the same as six, is the same as ten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But rather than thinking of it this way, I want to think about it as. So, if two and six and ten are the same, they're all the same. So they're the same element. Okay. So if we have mod four, there's only like four different numbers, zero, one, two, and three, because all the other numbers, I'm using the word other, but they're the same, right, in this world, because we've equated them. So there's only four elements. So we could look at, for instance, I'm saying mod four just as an example, mod anything. Um, mod n, there are n of these integers, okay? So if we look at, we can do like a complete multiplication table, like a times table of all the numbers that there are in the system and, and see how it works out, okay? Here I made this, um, thing which does addition and multiplication, okay? So this is like mod two, there's only zero and one, okay? So zero plus zero is zero, one plus one is two, but mod two, that is zero, right? Um, and I can adjust what n is and it will do these different tables for me, okay? So when n is three, it's this, when n is eight, it's this and so on, okay? So what I want to do now is like, look at, um, look at a few different examples of n and see what happens, okay? So. I mentioned this matrix thing, okay? So what was the equation I had before? It was three X plus three equals one, right? Something like that. So what I did was I took the three to the other side and I got, uh, okay, I guess I'm going to write it. Let me just write this. So mod uh, four, right? This is the equation we had. So I took the three to the other side and we ended up with a two, okay? So the way I'm going to solve this, is I'm going to not get rid of three. I'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse of three, which is the same as division by three. Okay, three inverse, three inverse. But what is three inverse, right? So I think of that, it's almost like they're matrices. So it's better to think of the matrix view, but this reasoning applies to numbers as well in reality. So it's like multiplying by a third division by three. That's what all it is. So mod four, we need to go to n equals four. N equals four. So what is an inverse? What's the definition of inverse, right? The inverse is something which you multiply it by the thing and you get I in the matrices. In multiplication, it's one. So can you multiply three by something? So we need to look at the times table. Can you multiply three by something and get one? Yes, if you multiply three by itself, three times three is one. So the inverse of three is itself. So I'm just gonna multiply by three, okay, like that. So the inverse of three is just three. So this side, three times three is six. Sorry, sorry, three times three is nine. Three times three is nine, but mod four, that's one, right? Like we said, so that's just one. We got rid of the three basically. And here we have six, which is the same as two mod four. And this is how we solve it, okay? 
Now, the difference is what, so this does not always work though. So this is when things get a bit messy now. So notice, what if I had two here? Two x equals two. Does two have an inverse? Let's look at the row of two. Can I multiply two by something and get one? No, I can't, okay? So I can never get rid of two. So this, when n is four, is not a field because one has an inverse. Well, one is its own inverse, I guess, always. Zero, like I said, zero never counts, okay? So zero is like, in fields even, zero is not invertible in a field, but everything else should be. But two breaks here, so it's not a field, right? So I, um, I did this, so the question is now, when do they have inverses? That's the interesting question, okay? So I did this command called uh, residue grid, which basically, if, if the rows don't have an inverse, it throws them out. So let me do residue grid instead of multiplication grid. Okay, so and we did n equals four. So notice it, it threw out it threw out the zero row, and it threw out the two row. So these are the ones which have an inverse. Okay, so let me go from four to five. Okay, oh look at five. Okay, so five is nice now. Five, all of them have an inverse except zero, but zero we threw it out as I said. Okay, so five is a field. Okay, what about six? Okay, six went down again. We only have two invertible ones. What about seven? Ah, seven, we have all of them again, okay? The numbers between one and six, excluding the zero, okay? Numbers between zero and six are all the things mod seven. Um, eight, we don't have all of them. Nine, we don't have all of them either. There's like three missing and, and so on. Uh, 10, we don't have all of them. Two is in there, five is in there. 11, we have all of them again, okay? So if you've spotted a bit of a pattern here, the pattern is if you have a prime number, okay? The system you end up with is a field. If you don't have a prime number, basically you don't have a field. Okay. And it's no coincidence if I switch back to multiplication grids rather than residue grids. Um, for instance, and in four, what happens? Two, since two and four. So basically think about it. it's not that deep, really, right? But it's quite a nice. If you have two, what other elements can you add by multiplying by anything, really? It's always going to be divisible by two. But then you can add fours, okay? So you can get other things like two and adding four, but it's always going to be divisible by two. So you're only ever, ever going to end up with something which is either zero or two mod four. You can never multiply, if you multiply two by something like by 11, 22. Mod four, you can like add a four, okay? 22 can become 26. It can become, and you can subtract a few fours, but it's always going to be divisible by two. You can never get to that divisible by two-ness. But if you switch to five, okay? Uh, you can multiply, I don't know, two by, two by something will always be um, even, but you can add fives now. Adding fives, okay, that allows you to reach, to access odd numbers, okay? So that's basically the situation. So if you go to six, for instance, look at the third row. Everything's going to be divisible by three. Anything you multiply by three will be divisible by three, but adding sixes will not allow you to access the other numbers, okay? Uh, it's only the ones which, which have no common factors with six. So like five, if you multiply things by five, you get multiples of five, but adding six repeatedly will allow you to cycle through all the others, basically. Okay, so yes. So um, what I'm saying is we have this uh, field when the number of things you choose is a prime. So if you're working mod P, okay, P basically, in maths, if you say that P, okay, it's, it's prime. Um, I don't have to say it's like P is prime. So mod P, um, you have a field. Otherwise, it's a, it's a ring, not a field. Okay, so we haven't even begun to discuss quadratic reciprocity. Um, so, but, but hopefully you feel a bit comfortable or like if you haven't seen modular arithmetic before, hopefully you feel like you have a good understanding of it. And basically what I've told you, what I want you to take away from this five or 10 minutes I've discussed now is that you can divide, if you have an equation like AX plus B equals C or something like that, you can divide by A always. If it's zero, obviously it's senseless. But if it's not zero, you can divide, it's a field, okay? If you're working mod P. If you're not working mod P, if you're working mod four, if you're working mod six, you can't divide by three, for example, okay? Um, anyway, so let's go back to the slides. Yes, okay, so why is modular arithmetic useful in number theory? So I showed you the examples of like, um, you know, I mentioned the SA, uh, uh, RSA and Diffie-Hellman and, and I mentioned the calendar thing, right? In, in five, three, seven days or whatever. But why do number theorists care about? Well, first of all, loads of reasons, as I said there, but something which is very cool is, I mean, Diophantine equations, okay? So for instance, this one, 
two x squared equals five y squared plus one. What is the Diophantine equation? Okay, first of all, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's like Fermat's last theorem or something like this, okay? You have an equation and you want to find integer solutions. You want to find solutions where x and y are integers, for instance, here, okay? So if x and y are real numbers, there's obviously infinitely many, or, you know, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be like there's seven solutions or something like that. But with integers, you don't know how it's, what's going to happen, okay? Now, modular arithmetic is very nice when it comes to tackling Diophantine equations. Why? Because um, you can transform asking about infinitely many possible solutions. So integers as infinitely many, but you can restrict it to asking about um, basically casework, okay? So, I mean, I'm sure, anyway, I'll, I'll mention this in a bit, but if the, let's suppose this has a solution, suppose X and Y, we found X and Y which work, okay? If X and Y work, if this is equal for some X and Y, if I do mod the five of both sides, then it will still, uh, obviously, if this equals this, then mod five, they are equal as well, right? But if I reduce mod five, what's gonna happen? This chap here is gonna vanish. Oh, oops, sorry. Uh, this five Y squared is gonna vanish. And we're basically saying two X squared is one, okay, mod five. So two X squared is one mod five, you can uh, then divide by the two. Okay, so let's do that quickly. So how do we divide by two? We look at mod five, What's the opposite of two mod five? Three, okay? If you multiply by three, both sides, that's the inverse of two. So what did I say? You get two X squared is one. Multiply by three, both sides, you get X squared equals three, okay? So now we're asking whether three is a square mod five. Okay, we're asking is X squared equals three? Is X squared equals three? You might say, you know, there's no solution, but wait, remember, we're working in this weird number system, okay? So we don't know, maybe you square something and, it, so if you get a square, but reducing it mod five, it becomes three, okay? Maybe, I don't know, 64 or 81 or something. If you reduce it mod five, it becomes three. Is it possible? So let's look at the squares. So what are the squares mod five? Basically it's the diagonal, right? zero times zero, one times one, two times two. So zero, one, four, four, one. Okay, so this means that you uh, the squares mod five. So if you square anything, if you reduce it mod five, it can never be, um, three. The only thing you can get is one or four or zero, obviously, if it's like divisible by five, right? 25, etc. But if, if the other interesting ones, like one and four. So this has no solutions. So look at what we've done. We've got this equation where there's infinitely possible integers to try out. And then we said, okay, let's just, if there is a solution, reduce it mod something, mod p. And um, you've all of a sudden gone from infinitely many possible things to try to only finitely many, okay? So what this is probably, um, you've done something like this at some point in your mathematical life. Um, if you say, okay, we're thinking of like a, an integer problem, but n can either be even or odd, okay? And you split into cases. When you do that, what you're actually doing is thinking mod two, okay? Mod two. So this thing here, I'm sure you've seen this before, like even plus even is even. Odd times odd uh, stays odd. These things are basically captured by this, okay? Because odd is the same as saying zero mod two. Sorry, the other way around. Even is saying zero mod two. Odd is saying one mod two, okay? So here you're saying even plus even is even. Even plus odd is odd, right? And so on. So this captures the behavior of um, even and odd. And these, I'm sure you've used them. I, I think you learned these in primary school, like when or, you know, the rules are odd and even, but surely you, you, you would appreciate that then it's useful as well to look at. Um, so we don't have words for them, but, you know, integers cannot be of the form 3K, 3K plus one or 3K plus two, for instance, okay? And the way that they behave is basically summarized by this table, okay? So what have we have seen, for instance, here is um, squares can never be, uh, so, you know, there are no squares of the form 5K, plus three, there are no squares. 5K plus three can never be a square, okay? Similarly, if we go like three, so three is the next one up. Look at the squares here. Squares, you can never have 3K plus one. Sorry, you can have 3K plus one, because mod three, one, that's 3K plus one. But you can never have 3K plus two, okay? So that means if I do something like this, right? I know that this is not a square, because this is loads of nines plus two. Right, nine, 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 et cetera, et cetera, plus two. And that thing, uh, loads of nines, obviously the nine is divisible by three, but adding two, it, can, it can't be a square because there are no squares 
which are two mod three, okay? So now we're starting to uh, delve into the world of quadratic reciprocity. Quadratic reciprocity is precisely about this question. Um, if you're working mod P, okay, a prime, and we're asking X squared equals something, mod P, does this have solutions or not? Okay. So um, this has analogs in the real numbers as well. So in the real numbers, it's a, it's a trivial thing in the real numbers. Basically, all the negative ones have no solutions, all the positive ones have solutions. Okay, so in the real numbers, like you have the squares, which are the positive numbers, all of them, and the non-squares are the negative numbers. We're basically doing something similarly here. And in fact, so I don't know if you noticed the pattern when we did five. So five, there are, uh, okay, if you get rid of the zero, there's four elements there. Okay, again, let me switch to, I don't know, we don't need to switch. Anyway. There's four, but only two are squares. So it's like half of them, okay? This is easy to see because if you switch to the other, like, so we're using numbers between zero and four to represent these. These are like representatives, like four, I could, I could usually, I could, instead of four, I, I just decide to write uh, whatever four plus five is. I could just write nine. But we're picking the easy sort of obvious choices to represent all the other possible ways of representing these um, choices of, in this world where we've equated them as a comment. Um, but you could equ equivalently represent these like this. So tal five, they would be this, right? This is the same as four. This is three, right? Hang on, is that right? Zero, one, two. Uh, minus one, yeah, no, this is four, and this is three, right? Um, but if you square these, what happens? Okay, this becomes, if you square them, squaring works, works the same, right? I mean, it's four, one, zero, one, four. So because of this representation, and all of them, obviously, so if you do seven, et cetera, et cetera, 11, another prime, you're gonna get half of them showing up. One, four, nine, five, three, three, five, nine, four, one. There's like the symmetry as well, which was basically the same as the symmetry, like, um, because uh, half of them are just negatives of each other. So these are just minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, okay? So that way, that's why half of them are squares and half of them are not squares. Now the question is which, okay? So it's not obvious, like why is one, four, nine? So, you know, so here we're saying, if I can see correctly, which never shows up, no, four shows up, three shows up, two, I guess, two doesn't show up. So if you square something, okay, so if something is two mod 11, okay, so basically what you're saying is x squared equals two mod 11 is impossible, okay? It has no solutions. Um, so obviously I've shown you a situation where this is directly applicable, right? I showed you this Diophantine equation. There's loads of cases, basically, you know, it's, it's even like the way, uh, last time uh, Adriana mentioned elliptic curves, okay, in her talk, and elliptic curves, the way they're done in cryptography is there where it's like an elliptic curve mod something that looks like a sort of equation like this it's x cubed plus uh, something x cubed and then an x and then a constant so it's um whether these things have solutions or not so x squared equals a mod p has solutions or not is of immediate interest in applications and in number theory generally okay so now is so um, i don't know are there any questions up to now or, or if anyone wants to ask any questions, if I, because I, I don't know if I'm rushing or, you know. Um, huh? just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, me, no, uh, when you have, for instance, enough uh, mod, mod 10. Mm -hmm. il, so, the mod 11, so. Um, exactly, yeah. mod 10. Mod 10, uh-huh. Il, uh, fein, fein, amin, l'ohra, il residue grid, dawk li ma existuj, u mal factors, il prime factors ta 10, li ju 2, 5. Exact. Ashinti, hana ila kaal, ashinti, per example, 2, if you have two times the hard, they are too high. Uh, that's so, two. They are yeah. even. If as a thing. It's a gift to start chessa. It's a mod. It's a club to start chessa number. Yohara. Sort of. As you can do this, you can keep adding tens. So, uh? as a, as so for say, time two times the hard. On but if time mod ten, you can access other numbers. But mod ten, you can't. It will always be divisible by two. So, the club high degree. But the rota two. Call it even high degree. We say call it one. Alright, so three, tayeb three, three, and again three times something will always be three times one, three times two will always be a multiple of three. But by adding tens, okay, by adding different tens, you might get uh, one. So three times seven, which is divisible mm -hmm. by three. But mm -hmm. if you take away tens, you will get one there. Okay? So the key, in fact, the co prime, the key important thing, 
صحيح الكو برايم المود اللي يعتمد المود يكون كو برايم هذاك الاليمنت سو يكون عندهم ال سي يكون عندهم كومن فاكتور داك هايدر ثرو اوت سو فيرجن 10 دي ريدنا هانكي فيرجن 5 هذا هاي يكون بالفورس يو اي تو كول طيب جود كويشن ذاتس بيسكلي ذا ريزن مان اوكي سو اني ذا ريزن مانس هاف اني اذر كويشنز اور كان اي انتروديوس ذا ستارت توكينغ ذات ويرد فراكشن لوكينغ ثينغ اوكي All right, so how did it sound? Like, what is that thing in the result of quadratic reciprocity? So it's this thing called the Legendre symbol. Okay, basically, in maths we like having like something is one if something is you know something is one or minus one depending on cases so that you can throw it in equations and work with it. Okay, so basically whether this has solutions or not, okay, we denote it like this. So oh no, sorry, not like that fraction like that. So. A and P, because it depends on these two numbers, A and P. So, uh, so basically, if it has solutions, so uh, uh, if it has solutions, we put it equal to one, if solutions, and minus one, if no solutions. Right? It's, uh, there's also like, it's, uh, it's nice if you can have like A be any integer. So in theory, like you only need to have A be numbers between zero. So if it's, it has to be a prime, it's also like this one. We only need numbers between zero and 10 for Verita, or like one and 10, I guess, because even the zero is meaningless. The zero will not have solutions. But if, it would be nice if we could put like, say, 77 up here. Okay, 77 is the same as basically seven, right? But asking whether x squared can be 77 mod 10 it is something like, if you have an, if the original equation you're working with has 77 in it, it's nice to work with this. Yes, it's basically asking the same question as that, right? But then we'd like to have like, for instance, 20, okay? So this uh, makes no sense because it's like, a, it's a factor of 10. So it's like, a, it's like the zero case, okay? So in this specific case where this is divisible by this, we add zero, okay? Zero if, um, you know, I guess what I, I, I put A up here and P, right? So if P, divides a okay and that's the definition here so if a is zero mod p it's zero it's one if a is a, okay so this fancy word quadratic residue b is basically square it's the square mod p and it is a non-residue is like a not a non-square okay so this is the Legendre symbol this is what it means okay so what the hell is quadratic reciprocity about Oh, yeah, okay, let's do some examples, actually, just to get, to get a vibe for it. Okay, so two, uh, five, okay, so what should this be? Okay, so this is asking the question, can you get a five, can you get a two as a square mod five, okay? Well, to answer this question, we just look at the multiplication table mod five. Can you get a two? No, it's impossible. The only thing you can get is one and four. So this thing is minus one. There are no solutions to this, okay? What other examples were there? 10, 5, okay? So uh, 10, 5, okay? This is asking basically if you can get x squared equal to 10 mod 5, which is the same as asking whether x squared can be zero, okay? In this specific case, we just, this, this is the fight to be zero, right? It's, it's the middle case. Oh, but minus one mod five, sorry, minus one and five. Let me just do another one for this. So, uh, minus one. So minus one, can you get minus one? So what does that mean? X squared, can X squared be negative one? Again, remember, this is not the real numbers. This is a legitimate question. It's not like, it's not gonna be I or something like that. So cause minus one, what is minus one? is the same as four. Can X squared be four minus five? Yes, it can, okay? So in fact, two times two is negative one, not five. So yeah, you have solutions there. So that's one, okay? So this is what the symbol is trying to tell us. So the quadratic reciprocity is a completely out of nowhere relationship. That's what it feels like. It's basically this, okay? So what does it mean? P, Q, Q, P, okay? So I think the best way to illustrate this is with an example, okay? So let's say 29, five, okay? No, sorry, the other way around, five, 29, okay? So what are we asking here? We're asking is five, uh, can, oh, sorry, can x squared, can uh, x squared be five mod 29? 
it's a little to do this. You have to stay doing the table for 29, which is a headache, right? It's a big table, 29 by 29 entries. But this thing is relating it to the table of five, which is completely, so the table of five, 29 over five. This is a completely different question. It's asking whether X squared can be 29 mod five. Okay, 29 is basically the same as four. Okay, so we're saying whether X squared is four mod five. So we know that this, we've already worked this one out there. X squared mod four mod five, yes, because uh, you can get a four. So this is one. Okay, this one, because this is as yeah, a 29 and four are the same mod five. So this is one. So we can find out this by knowing this. Okay, because what we say, what it says is that if you multiply them together, you get this thing minus one to the p minus one and two. So let's work this out. Uh, minus one to the 29 minus one over two and five minus one over two. Uh, like that. Okay, so their product should be one. Okay, so their product should be one. This means that this must also be one. Okay. So, so this should feel right. So, I, I think like people always say like if if this isn't impressive, then you haven't understood not quadratic reciprocity but modular arithmetic and how it works. So that's why. So I spent like almost more than half an hour discussing modular arithmetic, not quadratic reciprocity itself. But because I want you to be very familiar with what we're saying here and how powerful it is, because we're saying rather than doing this massive thing, right, this massive table, and seeing the diagonal of this huge thing, you just need to do. Uh, this, this is like a red deck, it's too 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 much for mathematica. Like five, this is all you need to do and see these, right? I don't even need to do a table, really. You just need to see the squares mod five. So uh my zero minus one. Oh, well, five mod out. So uh so you know it's basically if you ignore it's just one and two squared. So it's either one and four mod five. Because these, like I said, these are like uh it's real it's real four, you can write them like this instead. So you only need to look at like half of the numbers. So it's from zero to five, you only need to look at up to half. And um, so half rounded down, if you like. And it's um, their squares are, are the quadratic residues, okay? But it's much better than doing all the 29 ones, okay? So 29, it's like half of 29, which is 14. And you see all the squares from one to 14 and you reduce them to 29. It's still a headache to do that, but this is so easy, you know? And obviously this, like, it gets even cooler if like, you have a massive number, okay? Um so okay, and uh, so technically, all right, so this is the quadratic reciprocity. Now also there's um technically for odd primes, it is like this for two, for some weird reason, right, it's technical the reason why. Uh, the formula looks a bit different if you have two. Okay, so this applies when P and Q are odd. Um if it's two, you have this. So basically, yes, we can tell. So how, let's do a, a complicated example. Yeah, this one. Okay. So does x squared equals 150 mod 1019 have solutions? Okay. So we're saying x squared equals, what was it? 150 mod 1009. Mod 1009. Okay. So what we're asking for basically is this chap, right? 150 1009. Now, okay. So to do this, there are some things I need to tell you about the Legendre symbol. Uh, first of all, okay, I didn't include them in the slides. I thought I did. <laughs> so it is multiplicative. Uh, this is easy to see actually. So you, you know this already from normal numbers. If you multiply a square and a square like four and nine, you're gonna get another square back. If you multiply a square and a non-square, you're gonna get a non-square back. Okay, that's basically how uh, you can like imagine a table like square, non-square, non square square and, and that's how um that's how uh, it works so basically so why am i saying this because this thing requires primes right that's p and q now this is not a prime okay remember in the definition it's p you need a p here ashinkella well because we care about the field the specific uh, field we care about this question the settings of the field that's why you have p at the bottom but a can be anything okay so that's why it, you can have one five over here, but quadratic reciprocity itself as a formula insists on primes. But it's no, no issue because we can factor a one five oh. Okay, it's two times three times five squared. Okay, so this is just gonna be uh, two on one oh nine 
times three on one oh nine times five squared on one oh nine. Okay. And the five squared, we can also uh, factor it like this. Okay. So basically, uh, this is the question I'm asking. Now, shall we do the table for like 109? No, we don't need to do this. So, uh, so all we need to do is um, we can swap these around. We just need to stay working on that minus one to the whatever, which is a bit annoying, but let's do it. So two on 109 uh, is related to 1009 on two. Okay, with that minus one factor. So I need to work that out. So it's minus one to the two minus. Oh, no, no, hang on. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. See, I'm being a bit stupid here. The two, I need to use this one for that, right? So this one I can work out without doing that because two is not an odd prime. The quadratic positive formula doesn't apply in that case. So this is just minus one to the p squared minus one on eight. Minus one to the p squared p squared minus one over eight. Okay, so let's just work this out because that's that is one. Okay, so this is one. So in other words, this has a solution if it if it were like uh, x squared equals two. Okay. Now what about the other ones? So the other ones, um, like I said, we want to swap them around because this this in this form it required us to do a grid. With 109. I don't even know. Let me see what happens. My computer might explode if I do this. Okay. Oh, okay. I think it's okay. Let me stop it because it's gonna. Okay. I stopped it. Okay. I don't want to, to, to zoom and crash and everything. You can still hear me, right? I, I didn't like crash stuff because I can't tell. Okay. Okay. I can see. No, one you're okay. fine. Okay. So and one. Look, yeah. Not inter and interrupt. Yeah, I'm man, man. over. Over nine, floco mat over eight. Man, I've skipped. Can let it in. Man, I've skipped. Um, oh. fill the tal formula that two. Eh, over eight. Over I'm nine. I'm at over nine. Ah, sorry. It's like when it's with the color show. Of course, it would, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. So p squared minus one over eight. So p squared, p squared minus one uh, over eight. Okay, that's not the last schema. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Okay, so um, what about 109 over 3? Okay, so or rather this thing, which was we want to know, this is related to this, their product. So into D, it is that, so that one or minus one. So, so you can just take it to the other side, basically. Because it's just, you, you care about the change in sign. This is telling you whether the sign is different or the same. Okay, so let's see. And uh, let's work that out. Minus one to the... Uh, the prime in this case is three, All right? So am I being careful? Yeah, so it's three minus one on two, three minus one on two, and one on nine minus one over two. So this is one. So it's, you know, the relationship is like one. So they're equal, okay? So whatever this has the same, this is the same as this, basically, is what we're saying. So this is easy to work out, why? Because one on nine, what is that? Mod three, okay. So one over nine. I guess we could write it as um, nine 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 plus one, right? Plus nine. Okay. So this this is like the thousand. No, this uh, no. This is the thousand. This first bit, and that's the nine. These go away. Mod three. So just that. One is one a residue. Mod three. One is always a residue. Okay, because it's like one times itself. So this is one. What about the five? Five on one oh nine. Again, so we need to just to work this out. I put a five there. This is also one. Okay. So this is going to be one. It's going to be the same as uh, one oh nine over five, which is one oh nine is four. Okay. Because the thousand just goes away and it's nine, and nine is four mod five. It's four as you mod five. It's like the example I keep doing always. So yes, it is. It's one. So this is one times one times one times one. Okay, a bit of a boring example. I just picked it randomly, but it would have been nice to have one negative. But anyway, uh, this is a quadratic residue. Okay, so you can have a one five zero. Okay, so um, I would do the table, but uh, as I showed you earlier, I think what I can do actually just to double check that we did this correctly. So how? What's like half of the numbers? I guess it's this, right? Five zero four. 
So if I do like uh, the numbers between one and 504 uh, and square them, okay? This will give me all the quadratic residues. And if I reduce them mod uh, 109, right? Which it will do it for us. So plus we should find somewhere 150 should show up here. So I can use Mathematica to check whether 150 is in here. Element, uh, is it element Q? Uh, no, okay, I'm stupid now, I don't know the commands. Um, member Q, I think it is, member, is it a member? Yes, okay, how do I use it? I think I need to give it the list first. Yes, give it the list and ask it as 105, what was it? 150. It is there, okay? So yes, we did it right. The answer is one. This has a solution, okay? So yes, I mean, this is basically it, okay? I mean, I, I, the proofs, I said there are 200 proofs and I wanted to do a proof, but they're always a bit technical. Um, there's a nice one involving like summing them up, basically. So actually a nice proof of them, just to give you a flavor of what it's like, you sum up all of them. Like, so sum up all of these, okay? But you multiply it by a root of unity, okay, a pth root of unity, like e to the i, uh, what would it be? I to two i pi, right? Over p, right? And you sum all these up uh, over. I think do I put an a here as well? Probably. And you sum it up like for for a from zero to p minus one, like all the different ones. And you can you study the sum basically. And this will give you a proof. It's one of the many proofs. There's loads of different proofs. There's a nice one on what's it called, like Mathologer's channel, but it's a bit elaborate because he tries to stay clear of fancy like sums with complex numbers and so on. But this is probably the easiest one for someone like you know you guys who are doing undergrads. Okay, so because the one on Mathologer is like he was like playing cards, it's fun to see visually, but it's too complex. It's you know. If you try to leave out the heavy mathematical machinery, you almost make it more complicated. So that's basically what I want you to appreciate. You know, at the end, it's like this thing should feel like it came out of nowhere. Okay, and I hopefully you understand and appreciate a bit like why Gauss called it his his um, aureum theorem or whatever you know, golden theorem. Um, okay, so that, that's the end basically. Does anyone have any questions? Um. I'll stop. I, I, I'll leave the screen share just in case it's about this. Uh -huh. Is that a digit zero? Um, le, so, ash, so, el power is a if P and Q are primes, it's one. So, 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 el power is zero. The answer can never be zero. So, if P and, since P and Q are co prime, they're different primes. That never happens. Uh, when is it zero? It's zero when P uh, divides uh, A. Uh, P can never divide Q if they're different primes. So that's uh, a good question. Uh, 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 Very good. I should have mentioned that. Uh -huh. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? The inner verotite stampa zaira tata di ma di veru bel hidnian. Like modular arithmetic, I mean, it comes up in loads of settings. Like again, Adriana's talk. I always thought of modular arithmetic as like, it's an example you do in groups, for instance, this field, um, it has applications in the real world, I guess. But this, to me, this impressed me because I mean, I, maybe I like number theory a lot. So this ability of like having an equation and trying to solve it over the integers, it's like a, it's a difficult problem. But if you just say, ah, oh, this five will go away if you do mod five and it's impossible, basically. And this stuff is, it's very, and this is just one example. You can get very ugly equations, like very ugly polynomials, you know, with fourth powers. I just did squares here because like there's quadratic reciprocity, there's like cubic reciprocity and so on. And you can generalize it quite easily, actually. Not, it's not too much, too, it's not more difficult sort of. Um, but yes, this, this stuff, um, and I'm not even using reciprocity here. I, when I did this example, I just reduced mod and the, it, it became obvious that there are no solutions. Uh, so when there are no solutions to an equation, modular arithmetic is very powerful. When there are solutions, it, it's, it's usually not, it's strong, but not as strong, I guess. But yeah, break, modular arithmetic is basically a clever way of breaking into cases. It's a very Juan, into Darba, Juan, Tamil, Chahaj, the project of Irene, Saka. With the Amelt, you know, if n equals 2k, if n equals 2k plus 1, but sometimes if n equals 5k, 5k plus 1, 5k plus 2, etc. Or it's like, you see, Mandik Sharfay, Tamil, Akash. If there's a modular arithmetic, 
دو ال 25k squared زو او اكلي يدرو زو ستار ميو اوكي سو ذا وركينج بيكمز ماتش مور نايس اند اليجنت اي ثينك لك نفتكر يا كيف نفتكر سو كينت كوادراتيك اكويشن اند اي ريديوس تو مود شي حاجه اما بيش اش 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 لين برايم اه لا ديك ديك دي في سو يو نو اي مين مود 5 اي جاست هارس ليا دي فورس هارس ليا تو بروف ات تو عشان تي ابريت سامي تاع المود اكثر من حفره انفورماسيون يقول سوا يكتار من مود 2 فورسي يو دونت كونكلود ذات ذير از ان سوليوشن تا في شو او اك مود 5 وركس اوت sometimes they need to do weird creative things like mod 13 or something you know what i mean and my usually is modulo a prime um but it's not always obvious which prime to pick and it's not always just the coefficient sometimes you get something looks like this but if you do it mod 17 you, you see that you can't have solutions so it's it's difficult to see why um you do that and then to prove zero in practice what was لي كونت لي كونت لي كونت ديك تاع المودز لي كونت ديك تاع شي حاجه جا لاخر ضربه فوق راف 41 راف نمبرز و سموث نمبرز لا اوكي كانوا حفنا برايم فاكتورز او برايم فاكتورز كبار او برايم فاكتورز زار لايك ذا وي اما ذاتس جست ا تيرمينولوجي سورت اوف اليك اي ثينك اي سيد اتس راف سو ياك اللي زار برايم فاكتور 41 بار اكزامبل تو المود مش تاع بادون بار اكزامبل Uh, so this sort of number theory is like algebraic number theory, okay? So it's using like groups and that sort of stuff to study um, these sort of things. And like I said, I, I think I already mentioned this, but the thing Adriana mentioned last time to do with elliptic curves. So an elliptic curve, if you look at it, I think I've mentioned this before. It's like uh, something like this, right? So it's uh, y squared. Uh, I think it's easier if I use something like this, Mos. Like if I just show you it, uh, it looks like... Um, I'll oh, no, make the slow internet connection on. Uh, it's, it's like, uh, it looks like a, a thing which looks like this, basically. So it's y squared, y squared equals like three x cubed plus five x plus one, say. Or like these weird things with like a bulge like this, okay? And Adriana mentioned that these are good because if you pick any two points and draw a line through them, you get, you always intersect in one other point. So it's a nice way to have a group, a system where you can add points somehow, like this point plus this point, just draw a line through them, where it intersects the curve again, is there some? I almost need to reflect, but basically that's the idea. And that's why these curves are nice. But in practice, you don't, so in these cryptographic situations, you don't use the curves as they are. You look for rational points on them or integer points even better. And you do mod the prime. And instead of a curve looking nice, like this, it looks horrible. Like if you Google, uh, elliptic curves, elliptic curves, they don't look like that picture. Okay, they look like this, but if you Google how they are used in practice, um, they look something like this. You see like this, these random dots, right? Anyway, but th this is this is the sort of thing you actually end up having. Elliptic curve cryptography, it just looks like a chaotic mess and it's impossible to recover where the, where uh, what the original two points were basically. Right, so that's the idea behind this stuff. So modulo, and even in Bitcoin, it's the same. Like you do something to the power of something, and you get the result mod a big prime. It's impossible to reverse that. Okay, it's called it's called the discrete logarithm problem. Discrete log. Um, it's like doing a log, but because of mod, it just ruins everything. So uh, the fact that that is difficult is the basis of proof of work of Bitcoin, basically. Anyway, I think I've. Like this is, I finished the talk, it's like me ranting afterwards. Does anyone have any other questions about this? So I cannot go. <laughs> you should go mentee. I don't have any questions, but this was really cool. <laughs> like the part when you mentioned, when you do like 2K plus one and 2K, it's, it, it is the exact same thing. I've never thought about it in that way. Man, it's man, making man. it more to. If you do like more, it's, I, it's very, it saves a lot of working, you know, splitting into cases. Um, I'll show you, Um But yeah, I, th I think that's my favorite interpretation. My favorite application of it is just proving that equations don't have solutions. Like it's very, you come up with these clever choices of P or like also certain polynomials don't have factors. It's basically the same thing if it's a polynomial equation, but it's like, uh, I know you, you know, you get these, if you get a big polynomial, and the factor theorem can help you get linear factors. But if you have like these big, like something to the fourth power, like a quartic times a quartic, how are you going to factor that? You know, the sort of stuff with integer coefficients. You can use these tricks, basically. Um, 
So it's all nice algebra stuff, basically. Um, I don't know. So I guess if there aren't any other questions, you know, thanks for showing up. I hope I was. I hope it. I hope it wasn't too slow at the beginning or whatever. But I tried to. I tried to, like, really push the. You know, because if some of you haven't seen modular arithmetic, modular arithmetic before, you're not gonna get why it's cool or why it's mind blowing that P and Q and QP are related, right? So that's why I had to drill that home, sort of. All these little examples, like uh, five is seventeen, what twelve, etc., etc. Okay, so. Um, Thanks again. <laughs> um, if there are no other questions, I guess we can end there. Onara come al altal linear algebra, but altal eigenvalue, sorry, the title at all. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao, Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you very much. Thank you.